What's up everybody? This is Ben. Good to see you. I know it's been a little while. I have a video today that I am super excited about. I'm going to show you how I made a remix entirely on the MC-101. Uh, this particular remix is going to be sort of future bass E, future pop, uh, maybe emotional dubstep. I don't know all the genres, whatnot, but it might sound kind of like, like Elenia, Marshmallow, that type of deal. I will play it in just a minute if that was all gibberish to you. And I hope that even if that's not your thing, you'll learn some stuff. I'm going to take you through in painstaking detail every last bit element of this track. Um, yeah, and I'm super excited to do that. Before that, I have just a couple things that I want to say so you can skip ahead. If you feel like you want to do that, I'll play the track in just a minute. And then we're just going to go through piece by piece and hopefully you can see exactly how I made it, and if you want to make something similar, or even if you don't, hopefully you can get something useful out of it. So before I go into that, um, I want to say I know it's been a while. I'm so thankful that all of you are still watching and subscribing. I My last video I made almost a year ago, I had less than a thousand subscribers. Now I'm almost to 1,500, and like, thank you, every single one of you. Um, I super appreciate it. It's just, it's incredible. It's super cool. I really hope that this gives you something of value. I'm gonna go through, I know this isn't everybody's cup of tea as a genre, but I hope uh, we're gonna touch on all sorts of fun stuff like sampling, how I use different effects on the drum rack to do all sorts of things, all of the workarounds and stuff that I found useful in this particular track, um, and all that stuff. So, yeah, um, grab your beverage of choice. I have some coffee, and uh, it might be a long one, so I have some backup coffee too, because you never know. Um, but yeah, that's all I have to say, so let's uh, let's get into it. So, uh, this tune is a remix of a tune that my brother wrote. Um, he's super cool, he's a phenomenal musician. Him, He has this project with this other guy, um, and they're, they're just fantastic. And so he played me this song a while ago, and was like, hey man, we're trying to get some exposure, what do you think of this track? And I'm like, that's probably one of the greatest songs I've ever heard. Like, honestly, like if I didn't know you, I would follow you on, on Spotify or whatever. So like, in the back of my head, I'm like, I kind of want in on this. <laughs> uh, so if you haven't heard the track yet, I'll put a link in the description. The, the band is called Mad Happy. Uh, the track is called Losing My Head. It just came out a couple of days ago. I love the song, but when he showed it to me originally, I was like, I want in on this. I, what if you, what if I did a remix? Cause I want to make like a full like pop song on the MC 101 to make a video. And this seems like a perfect opportunity, and that way I get to put my name on like a piece of this song that I really like. Uh, so that's why I, I did it. He was like, heck yeah, man, uh, get people to go listen to it. So go check that out. Um, it's a great song. And uh, yeah, I, I encourage you to go check it out. This version of it, um, this is the version that I have that I've made. It will be available on my Patreon for free. Just go over there. You can download it if you really want to hear it, this version of it. But I sent it back to my brother, and he sent it. He re he did a little bit of, like, fine-tuned mixing, and he sent it to his mastering guy. And they're going to put it out uh, in, like, a month. So it'll, I'll let you guys know when that happens. Um, but I'm super excited for that. But if you really want to listen to the song in its current version, which is just straight recorded from the MC-101, straight into FL Studio, no processing, no limiting, right onto Patreon, Go to my Patreon page, I'll put links to all of that stuff in the description. So, without further ado, I will play the song. Um, I'll put some stuff on the screen, hopefully, so you can... It's not like I'm just hitting play and letting it go. Um, oh, real quick, my, my setup here. I have a my Launchpad X right here. It's running through a Raspberry Pi and then straight into the MC-101. Um, the MC-101 is going straight out of the MC-101 to a Scarlet interface into my iPad, which is what I'm looking at you. My iPhone is recording the camera looking down here. Um, that's my whole gear. I'm only using the launch pad because I like the buttons here. I like, like, they're good for a lot of things. I, over the last couple of years, I, this is how, this is how I make music. This is, I can't do, I can't think musically without this in front of me. Um, I played piano for a long time, guitar for a long time, now I'm on this, maybe I'll make videos about this one day, but that's just why it's here, because that helps me think. And I'm gonna take you through musically and production-wise and everything that I can through this track, so I wanted it here in case I need it. Um, but yeah, that's it, and uh, without, that, uh, with that out of the way, 
This is the track. It's called uh, Losing My Head Remix. the tune. Uh, I hope you liked it. I really like it. If you didn't like it, if you were like, man, that would be better as like a nice R&B pop tune, go check out their version because that was the original and I just wanted to make it really like EDM like sort of festival-y or you know, the, you know this is the stuff I listen to. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's what it is and uh, let's get into talking about all of it. Every, every aspect. It's only four tracks. It's only six clips, four tracks. It plays straight through. Simple as that. So, all right, let's talk about Sir's overarching structure. Um, how do you make a future bass track? Uh, it's pretty simple, actually. It's super simple. And future bass, a lot of like uh, electronic music genres that have been around for a little while are like crazy formulaic. Like there's just, there's not, you don't, you really, if you don't want to, you can, you can play with stuff. But if you don't want to, you don't have to put any thought into the song structure. And to be honest, I didn't put a ton of thought into the structure. I really liked it. Like it fit nicely the way they made the track in with the way I wanted to make the track. So uh, the structure is basically, um, if, if there's six tracks on each clip or on each track, there's six clips. Um, they're each eight bars long. Uh, and they just, each one is set up to clip chain one into the next. Uh, oh, no, you know what? I didn't, I used the new thing. I used uh, scene chain in the, the, new, the new feature, apparently. Um, I didn't know I did that. That's cool, all right. So yeah, it's just, it just scene chains. Um, there's six scenes and it just goes one into the next. It's super simple. Um, yeah, that, that was added in firmware 1.7, I think. So if yours doesn't have a scene chain option, um, make sure on the newest firmware. But uh, it's simple, right? It's uh, the first clip is the introduction, which in my mind is like, it sets like the scenery, sort of the background vibes, the, the right? If you're looking at like a painting, it, it, it shows you like the background, like what's going on maybe. Um, that's how I, I interpret the introduction. Uh, clip two, uh, or oh, scene man. two, oopsie. Scene two is uh, the first buildup. So the uh, future bass is, is and, and a lot of electronic genres are very 
build up, drop, build up, drop, break down, build up, drop, etc. So the first build up I like uh, when songs give me some lyrical content that I can connect with that tell me what is coming up and what the understanding of the song is about. And this, in more traditional acoustic music, you would like, this is like verse one, right? Uh, so verse two, or sorry, so clip scene three is uh, the first drop, which you can think of like the first chorus. It's the energy, the impact, it's the the crux of the song. Um, it's what you want your audience to take away. Then I have, I go straight into another buildup. Um, you can do a breakdown, bring the energy back down, like a, like a post-chorus section, or you can go into a buildup. Um, I just went straight into a buildup because I really like this line that they recorded. And uh, so yeah, so it just, it goes drop straight into the next buildup for eight bars and then back into the final drop, which there's actually, there's three, four bar sections in the last drop because I was having some fun with it and I really liked the sound of it. So that's the structure. And uh, now we're gonna really, oh, one other thing I wanted to say about the structure is the tempo. Um, I set the tempo to 81 and a half because that was the tempo of the original track and I didn't wanna do too much manipulating the samples up and down and future bass happens comfortably at like 160 to 175 or so BPM. So uh, 163 is a nice multiple of 81.5. And yeah, we just went with it. Uh, and I thought it sounded good, so I kept it that way. Um, but yeah, okay, so that's, that's it. Uh, there's four tracks, six clips per track. That's only 24 clips to talk about. Pretty simple, really. So let's, uh, let's get into it. Let's go all the way down to scene one and the drum clip. So I'll let you know the first thing I have set up, I have a drum and compressor track on track one and three tone tracks on track two, three, and four. And I do all sorts of different things with the tone tracks. The drum tracks are drums and samples. So I did, uh, my brother and his partner, they did send me uh, stems of the song. So if you can get stems of a song that you're trying to remix, uh, that's always nice to have. Um, if not, there's ways to, to sort of get around and get what you need. Uh, but stems are easiest and that's what I did here. So the very first thing that I did, which I didn't do on the MC-101, I did it on my iPad, which I can't show you because that's camera one right now. Um, but I did, I chopped up the samples and I only used the vocal and one guitar sample because I loved the guitar sample in the original track the guitar sample runs through the whole track I don't know if you guys got that track from like Splice or if uh, Spencer played it in but it sounds awesome like it's awesome I really liked it so I kept it and then the rest I just took vocals and so what I did was I took the vocal lines that I wanted to be it, like the lead the the forefront the melody which is like the chorus part and I think not that I can find it, I promise. That one. And this is the guitar sample that I took. This is the only melodic element I took from the original track. And I just, I really like how it sounds. Like, it sounds great. It's got like a warbly sort of lo-fi almost type of sound. It just sounds so cool. And then I took the vocals. Um, and so what I did was I took these vocals from like for the lead parts, for the, the buildup and the, the two buildups and the chorus. And then I just, I was in FL Studio Mobile on my iPad and I just chopped it around interesting bits and then loaded them in here. Didn't take too long. Like I said, I did it all for my iPad. I didn't even have a computer at the time that I made this track, uh, mine was down. Um, so I just did the iPad and I thought that was pretty neat. That like sort of totally mobile workflow. And uh, so yeah, so, Let's talk about what we have going on in the intro on, actually, we're gonna start with the sample, with the uh, tone tracks, because they're actually simpler. I think, yeah, there's not too much going on here. So on track two, I have this set up, by the way, so that um, 
the launch pad is controlling whatever track is selected. So if I'm just playing stuff, that's that's what's going on. Uh, so track two, we just have this uh, PWM basic pad. It's a simple sound. Um, Oh, does it, it doesn't even come in here, I don't think. Let's check the sequencer. Yep, it's not even playing through the intro. Let's try track three. We do have something playing on track three, and that is the piano strings patch. I think this is in pads. It's a really pretty sounding uh, patch. And I, I'm just following the chords of the sample that I took, um, which I believe are A minor, C sharp, and then A minor, D, and, and resolves to a G at some point, or rather to an A. No, it goes back to A, yeah. I just went through this last night. I made this track a while ago. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so on the piano strings, to give it this like wavy feel that is um, helps give it sort of some like crispness, I feel like. Uh, all I'm doing is we are modulating, you can see the sound knob. Um, and this is just with Motion Designer, I drew a sawtooth wave on sound and I believe sound is just mapped to level. Uh, we can check that by holding this button. Now the sign C1 is level. So all that is is bringing the volume of the patch up and down. And then every eight steps, I'm changing chords. You hear, this is like a quirk, I guess, of the 101. Um, it's a little bit clicky at the beginning, which you wouldn't necessarily expect when if you were like drawing a saw wave in a DAW. Um, you can change that uh, if you change the you could raise the attack a little bit on the patch, or you could lower the volume, lower the, the volume modulation level on the step right before this one. There's stuff you can do. I thought it sounded fine like it is, so I didn't bother with it. Um, but this this pulsing, this just a, it's just a, if you go into motion, uh, motion designer, form type saw, step length four, minimum value, probably I had the minimum value set to like 30. The maximum value is probably set to like 110 or something, and then uh, send the destination. Uh, ass assign it to sound, and then you just hold this button, and this assigns the sound knob to whatever you want, and level happens to be all the way on the left. I use it a lot, so I know. Um, so yeah, so that's all that does. That's a really common shape in a lot of electronic music, because uh, it gets out of the way of like a kick drum if it's there. And the kick drum isn't there on all of them, but if you've listened to a lot of electronic music, your body, your mind is used to hearing that like pulsing in like that time. So it gives a nice, it just makes it feel familiar and nice and cool sounding. Um, so yeah, so that's all for track three. Track two doesn't do anything for this clip. And track four, I think, if I just bring in track four, I think we only use it right here. Um, and track four is actually, oh, which you might recognize as the bit from the chorus section or from the second build up section. Um, and I wanted to just like toss it in there to give a foreshadowing, I guess, of where the song is going. I kind of like to do that sometimes in the intro. I think it sounds neat, gives a little flavor, texture as we go through there. Uh, so it's just a tone track, and I just loaded that sample into the tone track. If you go to here um, and you hit, you go over to wave file, you can just pull it up uh, from anything, and it'll it'll play it. Uh, middle C should be like the the pitch that it should be at, and you can you can speed it up that way if you want. I didn't. I think I just left it at the pitch, um, but I did. It sure sounds like there's some multi effects on it. Nope, there's not any multi effects on it. Uh, I don't know if I put anything. No, it's pretty simple. There's a uh, not much going on. Oh, I did. I there's a uh, cutoff is much lower than 
you might expect. Uh, just to shape the tone a little bit, because I didn't want to, you know, give too much away. Um, but yeah, that's it. So, I mean, track two, three, and four is, is super simple, right? There's almost nothing going on. Uh, which is fine. It doesn't have to be that much going on. Uh, and I like the way that it sounds, so this is the intro, except for track one. Yeah, that's it. So, track one is my drum rack. And we have, let's see what we have. We have a kick, kick, snare, clap, rim shot type of deal. This is just a riser. If I have any risers on here, I've talked some about how I make risers on this. I actually have new ways that I do it now um, that are fantastic and I'm gonna make a video about them really soon because I'm, I'm really excited but I wanted to make this video first because it's important that this video comes out soon. But uh, most of these risers I think are just from a Cymatics free sample pack. Um, if you search Cymatics, it's C-Y-M-A-T-I-C-S. Back six, seven years ago, they made all of the samples for like EDM, I think. Um, and sometimes they just give away free packs of samples. So that's what I have on here. Um, and that's that. Tom. This I took, I don't know if this was in their vocal track that they had reversed that reverb tail or if I did that in my FL Studio Mobile, like just reversed it and gave it the little sparkle reverb. But it sounds cool, super simple way if you're doing a remix, take a sample of like the the first vocal line, reverse it, add some reverb. Sounds great, nice little uh, transition effect. Percussion. This is the guitar sample. That's the... That's the main vocal. I think I just used it near the end of the intro section. That's another little like ear candy sort of thing that was in the original track that I just chopped up and I'm like, great, sounds awesome. And that's just a reverse symbol that I think is built in here. Yep, it's TR909 reverse symbol. Simple enough. Um, so yeah, so uh, without the samples, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna hold this and I'm gonna mute uh, some of the sample tracks. I think it's really, there's not a lot going on in terms of the drums. Yeah, I just, I really like the sample, so I'm just, I'm, we're just listening to the sample, really, and then this gives, this just, uh, track two just sort of fills it out a little bit. I just wanted to give, like, a little bit of body to it, which I thought goes nicely. Sorry, not track two, track three, hold on. It just gives a little bit of extra, like, oomph atmosphere, space, whatever you want to call it. I think it makes it sound nicer. Track four gives that little bit of flair there. And then this is the only other, oh, I guess I had this, this is doing something. As we get bigger. I'm using this one too. That's just a little ear candy. Just experiment. If you have cool sounds, just put them wherever. Just like, it's fun. Just just try to put them places. You can just, you can play it in live as whatever's going on. Um, yeah, and if it sounds good, record it. Uh, but yeah, that's the gist of the intro. Um, I guess we can talk real quick about the uh, drum patterns that I have, uh, which are really, it's only a kick drum. Um, it's just a kick and a snare. It's a kick drum for two bars, I think, then kick and snare. And then in the second half, it gets exciting. This is actually, I really, really, really like the technique that I'm using here. So quick tip, if you only want to listen to the second half of a measure, um, because, or of a clip, because it's eight measures long, if you hit shift and sequence, you bring up this first last step page. I'm going to hit shift and step 65, and now it'll only play starting from 65. See, first is now set to 65. Uh, so we don't have to listen to the first four bars because they're not a lot happen the drum track in those. Uh, but this... It's a little bit like a build-up, and then 
it builds up a little bit for three bars, it gets busier and busier. And then on the fourth bar, it falls away a little bit. And then we are ready for our build up section. So this is sort of normal transition type techniques. Um, there's all sorts of rhythms. I like to try to like combine them. A lot of people that make electronic music and other music use drum loops, um, which are somebody has either programmed or played out like a four bar loop of drums. You can grab it, put it in your music. Some people think that's like cheating or whatever. I like there's I don't think there's any cheating in music. If you can get stuff from your head to your headphones or to your speakers, I don't care. I don't think anyone should care. It's only about making the music. I don't use drum loops because I don't find any part of the drum loop process enjoyable. I don't like looking for drum loops. I don't like organizing drum loops on my computer or on my devices. I don't like trying to find drum loops while I'm making a song. I, I don't like any of it. It's just not fun. So I don't do it. Um, but if you do do it, great. That's awesome. Um, and there's a lot of techniques that people use with drum loops that sound good. Like you can take some like, like Dembo rhythm from like one little snare and then you can put it over like a more traditional like techno rhythm and you can get something really cool that you wouldn't have gotten otherwise. So I try to do that sometimes with, uh, without using the drum loop. So like this sound, this stick sound is a sound that I like. And if we just listen to the kick sound starting, uh, we can start here. Um, and you'll notice that these colors, I hope you can see on the camera, but maybe not. These are all slightly different velocities. Um, and so in the MC-101, one of my absolute favorite useful tools is when you're programming drums. If you click it once, it's the highest velocity. If you hold the track button down, click it again, it gets dimmer, it's a lesser velocity. Click it one more time, it gets even dimmer, it's an even lesser velocity. That gives you three velocity levels to play with without ever looking at a menu, and that's awesome. So with this, You can hear that it's different every time. Um, and that that sounds good. Uh, it, it keeps things interesting and exciting and is more like how a drummer would play it, kind of. Um, I, I do try to not do it completely randomly. Um, you want to like, if you, t if you do it randomly, figure out which of the random parts sound good rhythmically, like, those are like different like patterns of three that I thought sounded neat. Um, so I've cop they're, they're copied the, between the two measures, they're the same. Uh, that I think controlling that you can make stuff super, super flexible. Um, yeah, and you still get that, you can still get that sort of like different rhythms coalescing that you might want from using different drum loops, but you get it without having to deal with drum loops, which is a win for me. Um, so I think I have that on a couple of these. I'm just turning the scroll wheel, which will change which sample we're looking at. Um, so I'm just checking to see if there's anything particularly interesting. This clap sound, uh, ba -ba. let's let us hear that. So as we're getting closer to, we want to put impart a little bit more energy to this. It's like, bah. Ba, ba, ba. And again, I'm using these velocity levels to just program in quick stuff, uh, but to keep it, keep some variety to it. So I think altogether, if I unhighlight, if I unmute all of our stuff, I think that makes for a pretty interesting drum line. Um, so, yeah, so we have some, that's the drums that we have going on. That's what's going on in the samples. And uh, that's what's going on in our tone tracks. So the whole intro section is, uh, sounds like this. Nope, that's my fault. Uh, I still have track one sequence. First is starting at step 80, uh, 81. So since you can see this is yellow, I'm gonna hit shift and clear it. Just like that, piece of cake. Now, uh, the intro sounds like this.
So there you go. I just wanna make sure, I don't remember if I have anything fancy going on here. Uh, bef before we continue, I'm just, I'm just checking to see if there was any other motion that I put uh, anywhere here. And I don't think there is. Oh, there is, okay, yeah. Um, this is a trick I use a ton in this song and I really like it. Um, so sometimes, especially music like this, you might want to pitch your snare drums up or your hi-hats up like to do a roll like a, it's like a crescendo, but you're going up in pitch. Is there a word for that? I don't know. It's been a while since I took music classes. Um, but as you go, you're getting, you go, you go up in pitch. Um, let's see, I don't know if this section actually, like if it's very strong. Uh, bu -bu Oh, it's that, I wasn't sure why it wasn't working, but it wasn't working because I was not on that clip actively. Um, so yeah, if, I don't know if you hear it well here, uh, but if I go here and we just listen to the drum track, uh, you don't hear it that much. Um, but that's okay. We'll talk about it more in a minute. We'll talk about we'll talk about that trick in a minute. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much all that's going on on the track for clip one. So let's go to clip two, which is the build up. So sounded weird. That sounds weird. Why does it sound weird? Oh, I bet I know. Uh, because while I was messing around on the other track, I accidentally turned on first and last step on this track. So let's get rid of that. All right. I'm feeling guilty for no Here we go. other reason but going through motions to make the hands meet to bring my sensibilities die on the daily. And I took up smoking because I can't do praying, but I can do anything. That's what These dreams are amazing. Now, this section is all about building up anticipation for the drop. Beyond that, uh, I like to use it lyrically to like sort of set the mood of the piece. And this verse that my brother put down is just I, fantastic. It so beautifully encapsulates the feeling of the track. Um, like it's great, it's just fantastic. Adam, well done, you did, you did good. Um, so I really just wanted to like compliment that with this slow build that ended us in the drop where we're looking for. Uh, so to that end, let's, uh, one more time, let's, let's, uh, talk about the tone tracks first. So let's, what do we got on track two? Cool. Uh, this is just... This is now we're using the, the PWM, which is pulse width modula modulation basic pad. Um, and again, it's the same chord progression, probably down here. What did I say it was? Sorry, I went over this last night. That's the gist of the progression. Um, I think the first time it does it, it goes from A, A, C sharp, to D, uh, back to C sharp, and then it goes to A, C sharp, D, down to A, uh, which is important for like the resolve sound when it goes down instead of back up to the top. Um, but yeah, again, you can hear that saw wave um, that's going every four steps. So let's see the motion. I'm actually, ah, okay. Yeah, this is this is clever, I think. If you watch the sound parameter as I go up this way, you can see that that's going 45, 65, 86, 106, 45, 65, 86, 106. That's again, going to the mod, the motion menu, uh, saw wave, four steps, pick them, 
low number, pick a high number, hit execute, and then just use your ears to set the high number and low number. Filter though is going consistently up, uh, which is just, again, you can see as I go through the filter parameter is going up and we get all the way up to 63, I bet. Oh, nope. Ah, okay, yeah, we get all the way up to 63 here and then we go back down a little bit just right before the drop. Uh, to kill off some of the high frequency. But the idea then is that it's over time, it's pulsing up and down with the level, but also it's getting brighter as the, as the sequence goes forward. So you can hear it's a little bit understated, almost like synth string soundy. And then as we get here, you hear more of those overtones up top, the harmonic stuff. Okay, and then in the second half of it, it actually, we're switching to a higher octave. Um, to, to add to that, that rising feeling. So that's track two. What do we have on track three? This is piano strings. Again, same pad, same, same exact deal as we had before. Uh, see, do we, anything different? Nope. This is probably just the same exact clip, I think, from before. It's just taking the chords. It's got this motion. Ooh. Okay, this is one of my favorite tricks. Uh, using the four tracks is use different things. You can hear there's only one track playing, but at that point, uh, we have this this sort of little da 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 da, which mirrors the response part of the call and response of the lyrics. Uh, the lyrics goes, "Cause I can do anything. That's what they told me." Um, so this is just, this is just following that, the da 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 da, it just adds like a tiny bit, you don't even really hear it in the mix, but it like, it, it just adds a little bit of oomph to those lyrics. Um, so to get that without using a whole track, well, this patch is piano pad. So I'm using the pad part and that's accentuated by the fluctuating in, uh, in volume, but you can still you can still use the attack of the piano to like pick out notes even while it's like mostly a pad patch. Um, and again, since you're not really hearing it, I'm just trying to add a little oomph. This was a perfect opportunity to use that technique because it just gives that little extra and you don't need a whole other track for it. Uh, so real quick, And it even goes with the, the side chain pump effect. That's what the, the sawtooth that goes every four bars um, for a lot of technical reasons that sometimes called like a side chain effect. I'm not gonna talk about that. If you can look it up or I can give a different lesson about it. But, but so instead of that side chain deal, uh, or you're still getting that side chain deal a little bit, which isn't a bad thing. Um, Cause that helps still with like the, the pump of the track. So uh, track two and three together are really like, they're filling up our space. Track two is giving it some bit of lift also as we go. You can hear that. When you have it, when you have that track two with another pad that's going like, um, that's following it, almost playing in unison, the, the difference as track two changes, that gets, you hear that a lot in your ears and that's why you start to feel that like woo going up, even though I haven't done like a whoosh effect yet. Track four is the whoosh effect. Um, this is, I will say, track four, pink alert. There's a pack that you can buy for the 101 from Roland. Uh, they gave away the first 40 packs for a while. Each pack's like 99 cents. It has a, like a couple, like 20, 20 something sounds in it. Some of them are sorted by category or genre or whatever. On the whole, I can make most of the sounds I want, but I did buy, I, I didn't buy it actually. I, they gave away all 40, like the first 40. Now there's like a hundred. They gave away the first 40. I downloaded the first 40 a while ago. And this one, this pink alert sound is from a pack called Transitions. And if you're struggling with transition sounds and you want to spend a whole tone track on a transition sound, it, it is actually a really great pack to have. Um, basically, you can like modulate, if you modulate the cutoff, it makes a nice transition sound. 
and even if you modulate like the, the system control parameters, like they're set up so that they're easy to use as transition sounds. What's that? That's the reverb. I might have messed something. I don't, that's probably not modulated, but it doesn't matter. I won't save it. And the track's already sent off, so it doesn't matter if I change anything. Um, but yeah, so this one in the sequence, I just hit one note that is the whole length of it. And we can see that I'm modulating. Again, the filter is being modulated slowly. It's a saw wave, 128 steps. So it's just consistently going up. And then the sound, which is the, the sound knob, which is the level, is going up and down to pulse with the track. Um, so those three together. This is gonna be a continuously rising sort of feeling. That's it. Simple as that, just going up with the chord progression. Uh, so now let's talk about the drum sample track. Um, let's talk about, oh, you know what? Yeah, we're on, we're still on scene two, not, not scene three quite yet. So the first thing is, feeling guilty for no other reason. Um, let's, which one is, if too many sounds are happening at once and you just want them to stop, uh, if you hold shift, even after you stop the sequencer, um, if you hold shift and the, the play button, this is a, an important tip, um, it will just stop all the music. If nothing's playing, but something is still like carrying on, uh, shift and the play button will stop it. So like, if this is like, you just, you just stop it. Like that. Instead of that, you get this, I don't know, it's really useful for me. Um, but yeah, so let's talk about real quick. Um, There's no kick drum for the first half, so on the light sounding. I don't know if there's a kick drum in the second half. Nope, not. No. Um, normal stuff for the kick, uh, for like the build up part, you sort of take out a lot of low end stuff so that when the low end kicks in on the drop, it's like boom, and you're not expecting it. Um, so yeah, so uh, again, this is sort of, I think, see if I did it here. Uh, if I go shift sound. Yeah. Um, so again, I like to use built in sounds and treat them sort of like you would with a drum loop, because I think that can get you a lot of really interesting rhythms. Um, so if you listen, this is the one I don't want. Great. So this like this has some nice bounce to it, I think, and it gets more exciting as we get into the second half of the measure, and we get some traditional build-up elements. So I think that sounds really cool. That's all sequence. There's no drum loops there. Um, and while a lot of people would probably use drum loops to make that sort of thing happen, I, like I said before, I didn't want to. So we have this stick. Drum clap. This guy. This is this is one that I had a lot of fun with on this particular song. Which this is just like regular snare, I think it's called. It's called regular snare two. Um, I like to take this. I saw it might have been Martin Garrix. I don't know. Somebody was doing a video, and they were like, "Yeah, I found this like this." A snare line from like a marching band and use that loop and it was awesome and I'm like wow that does sound awesome so with this snare and I do this pretty often now um, I try to make like a sort of drum line sounding drum line with the snare I was in marching band for like a year uh, in college I played trumpet not very well but I did and I was there and the drum line you know they do all sorts of cool stuff so um, and with the 101 Super easy, right? You hit like if you hold Because you can hold the track number and you can get your different velocity levels You can also hold sequence and get different levels of like flams like many hits at once um, And so it just makes it super super easy to program in these lines like this 
which the, again, this is a buildup, so it's more complicated as you go further on. But like at first, it's pretty simple. And then it starts getting exciting. And that, like that sound layered in with the rest of, with the rest of the percussion, it just, it sounds so cool. It just, it gets, gets you excited. And it's, you, you can't even, it's hard to like pick out, but like if you mute it. Now uh, this, this guy is really taken over, but like at this part, it really, like it adds something there. And I think that's really neat. Um, so let's talk about this stick. I like stick sounds a lot. And again, um, just playing with velocity, adding in the, the, the flams and the, the rolls and stuff. You can really, like, you can really, you can just, you can do so much. And it just, it sounds so exciting. It's just one sound. But whatever you're doing, I like to focus on the sound itself and really like make something rhythmic just with that sound and then make something different rhythmic with a different sound. Then when they come together, you get all sorts of like interplay between them. So like this one, it's got a bouncy rhythm on its own. Again, not it, to me, it sounds kind of like a marching band thing. I don't know enough about snare patterns to tell you marching band stuff versus other stuff. But to me, it sounds sort of marching bandy and I like that. Um, so let's, the only other big element I mean, I have like the, the, the snares obviously, but then uh, I have these toms in here every once in a while. Toms are great for just adding a little bit of flavor. Too many toms, it will start to sound kind of weird, but a little bit of toms just will take your average drum line into like another level, just like just the right amount of toms. I like playing like between the toms and the snare, I like to make a nice little rhythm. And that like, again, that just adds some interest to whatever you're making. Um, so yeah, so that's, I think most of the percussion, there's a couple of like riser effects that are just in there for funsies. And then the last line of the measure, uh, or of the, the, sorry, the last measure, the fourth measure of the eight measures, um, is a convenient time to put a little break in. If it's just, everything's going one direction, music is all dynamics, right? Loud and soft, fast and slow, that sort of thing. Um, if it's all in one direction, it's not that exciting. And if you're at a festival and you're a DJ, you can get away with it because everyone's like amped up and it's like about the hour long experience. But if you want everything concise in a song, I like to put breakups even in my short like eight bar rise section. Um, so this is a convenient time and on top of that, the lyric that occurs here is one of my favorites in the song. Um, I took up smoking because I can't do praying like that, you know, hit me hard, maybe because I was raised the same way as my brother. Um, but yeah, I really like that. So I wanted to emphasize it and it uh, happened to fall a really convenient place here. So I cut out most of the drums and let it like you fall a little bit. And then I put this riser back in to bring you back up and like slam into the next section. I'm feeling right, so I'm this is without the sample, but if I add the sample back in. I'm feeling guilty for no other reason but going through motions to make the ends meet to bring my sensibilities die on the daily and I took up smoking cause I can't do praying but I can do. See it like you're like ah and then back into it. And I really like doing that sort of thing. Uh, it's a few times through here. Uh, and it's it's not an uncommon technique. In fact, I do it again at the very end of this section. Um, again, I like the happiness is closing my eyelids. That's like, that's a really powerful line. So again, I pull out most of the drums to get you ready for the drop. Um, and again, that's common in this sort of electronic music to make it, you get, you do the big build and then you just hold there for like a second. You're like, and then the drop comes. Um, and in this case, I actually, oh yeah, that's, that's the other thing I want to talk about in just a second, but yeah, so it's about getting big and then you hold for a second and then you drop. Um, yeah. And so right after you hold for a second, so let me set the, let me set the sequence, the first, just, just the end part. Feeling guilty for no other reason. Uh, 
uh, ignore why it sounds funny. We'll talk about that in just a second. Um, let's uh, let's actually mute that. But yeah. So you hear how that snare pitches up as we go through? That's cool. I like that effect a lot. Um, and it's really, really, really simple. You can't do it all the time, but sometimes when it matters, you can get away with it. And all it is, is a, it's just modulation on the course tune of the track. It just, it's just going up and this knob is set to course tune. But any note that you hit before, any note you hit like the sample, before you start messing with that will stay playing as it is. It's only the new notes. So since I dropped everything out, so like, and like the hold part, there's nothing, there's nothing new playing except for that snare. So it's easy to just put the snare rolls there and have the chorus tune go up, and then you get that pitching effect with the snare. And that's really great for before a drop. Um, so yeah, that's another little trick that I used and now let's talk real quick about, I'm gonna, yes, I'm gonna reset this. Why did that sound weird? And that's because of this other trick that I used where every pad here is routed to a compressor that's routed to the dry output. Um, you can see if I look at like compressor two, out of sign is dry. This pad though, uh, let's see, pad edit. Where is it routed? I don't remember, compressor six. Shift sound, compressor six, out of sign is routed to the multi effects. And so uh, the multi effect, we're gonna look at the multi effect. I actually have a pitch shifter on. And then I believe, uh, yeah. So this knob, the mod knob is then assigned to the balance between the dry signal and the pitch shifted signal. And that changes through the track. So the pitch shifted signal is just an octave up from the original one, and I think it actually sounds really cool. Can I play that? I'm sure that I can. If I mute everything else. I'm feeling guilty for no other reason but going through motions to make that ends me. Like, honestly, that sounds pretty cool to me, especially for like an EDM type of track. So, let's unmute everything else. But just at the end, uh, I think it's just at the end. Um, Let's see, that's the mod. Yeah, just at the very end of it, I set that to a much higher value. Uh, at the beginning, I set it on purpose to 64, it's probably 50-50, and then, oh no, did I not set it at all? No, I set it to zero, which is none, and then just at the very end, I bring in some of that effect. So right before the drop, it gets high pitch, uh, which again, bringing the energy up, making it exciting before the drop. So I think that's pretty much all that I wanted to cover on this section. Um, but yeah, it's cool You if you route like one or two pads to the MFX and everything else to dry, you can still do a lot of shaping and stuff with the compressors, but you have the MFX to do something crazy with whatever sample you want. And you can, like obviously that can change clip to clip. So I like to use it just for those like moments um, within a clip. Uh, so yeah, so uh, yeah, that's uh, I'll, I'll just play it back through and you can listen for the things that we talked about. I'm feeling guilty for no other reason but going through motions to make the ends meet during my sensibilities die on the daily and I took up smoking cause I can't do praying but I can do anything. That's what they These dreams are my So that's the build up section. That's how you make a build up on the MC 101. Now we're gonna look at how we make a drop. Um, and this is this is really exciting. This is my favorite part. Uh, this is everybody's favorite part. Maybe not everybody. This is a lot of people's favorite part. Kind of the point of the future based dubstep type of song is the drop. You want this to hit you. Uh, Future bass is a little bit more subdued than dubstep, so you don't want it to like tear your face off, but you still want to give it a good like punch in the chest with the drop. Um, so let's talk about how we make a drop. Uh, the first simplest part of the drop is the kick 
and the snare. Um, so let's see, I have, I actually, look, I just used the Future Bass kit. Simple as that. Um, but yeah, so this, it's Synth Kick 7 is my kick drum. This is Synth Snare 3 I'm using here, and it's layered with uh, TR-808 clap. So this gives like a like a slap, and this gives like a little like a psh, like up above. Together, I think they sound pretty cool. This one I think is actually pitch shifted quite a bit. Yeah, key offset is 11 and a half. Um, so like normally, that sounds like that. That sounded too like grating or whatever, but it has a nice punch. I really like how it sounds there. So let's uh, let's just listen to the kick in the snare. pretty standard future bass type of type of uh, drop kick and snare pattern um, not too much more to it than that uh, so let's see what else we have going on percussion oh okay that super common as you do a drop like a nice like white noise like down shifter type of deal uh, sounds really good um, this one I think yeah I took it from somatics um, I promise I have a really cool tutorial about how to make those things right here on the MC-101 and it is, it's amazing, honestly. Uh, do you wanna just do it right now? Uh, it's not what I used in this track, but I could have easily done it in this track. I'm just gonna make a, a, a new clip right here, create a new clip. Um, it's a tone clip. Uh, it's muted. But yeah, so all I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna go to the motion designer. We're gonna pick a, we're gonna do something a little bit sneaky. I hope it works, I haven't tried it with this. Uh, but it's, we're gonna shift, make sure that it's 128 steps long. Um, I'm gonna hit, go to the motion designer, saw, step length 128, hold shift, turn the knob, it goes faster. Thank you for people who've mentioned that on YouTube comments. We're gonna set our minimum value. This is the tricky part. Uh, normally the saw goes bottom, up to down. We want it to go down to, to top to bottom. So I'm gonna set the minimum value. I think it really just means the first value. And then we're gonna take the maximum value and go down to zero. I'm pretty sure T-Break Beats showed this at some point that you could switch the numbers and it just blew my mind. You can make the saw go the other way. Um, and we're gonna do destination knob sound, execute. We're gonna do destination knob, change it to filter, execute. Gonna go to destination mob, mod, execute and then we're going to go to destination mod knob fx execute and now go to our sequencer we look at the motion we should see that it goes down so we go this way awesome and then all we're going to do this this is going to be crazy we're going to pick a note c is fine uh to change the length of it to 128 we're going to hold the fx button we're gonna hold shift and then we're gonna scroll with this and we're gonna go all the way to 128 and it's gonna sound like this. I'll turn it down a little. Great, awesome, fantastic. Now we're gonna go to back to note or hit exit so we're not editing that step. Hit note, initial tone, we're gonna to move to random. If you don't have a random choice, upgrade to 1.6 or 1.7, but you hit random and you're gonna hit mod gonna hit enter and it's gonna be complete and then you're just gonna hit play. Very slowly dropping. You know what? That might be a little bit hard to hear but I'm gonna go back to motion designer saw and I'm just gonna change this to eight bars instead or to 16 steps one measure instead of eight measures. Uh, same min value 127 max value 100 destination of fx execute Destination knob, mod, execute. Destination knob, filter, execute. Destination knob, sound, execute. Now it's only eight steps long. You hear that downshift? That was good. Now check this, this is where it gets wild, right? We're gonna hit, we're gonna hit click, we're gonna hit random. We're gonna hit mod. That's a completely different downshift. We're gonna hit mod again. That's a completely different downshift that sounds sick. We're gonna hit mod again. You 
you see where I'm going with this. You can just make a million of these. You can save them to your looper track. You can save them in a folder, run them right into Audacity or your iPad, save it wherever. That's how you make a million downshifts. You do the same thing, just set min value zero, max value 128 to make your uplifters. It's amazing. It's honestly amazing. Um, that was a huge detour. Sorry about that. Uh, let's delete that and pretend that we're still making the track that we're talking about. But yeah, absolutely wild. Anyway, in this particular song, uh, I have a... I just took that from Cymatics, but I could have made that on here. I didn't know it back then, but, but now I do. And man, man, it's cool. So, sorry, a little sip of coffee. Um, so that's all I have here. That's what's going on um, in the drum pattern. And then uh, this is the guitar sample from before. Uh, but now it is, it's the same sample as before. And it is, uh, it's just a little bit mangled. And I'm pretty sure, where's the output? It's going to compressor six, so. Compressor 6 is going to the MFX, and what is in our MFX? Yeah, it's a guitar to chorus. I've talked about this before. The multi-effects, if you scroll all the way to the end, you get like the combination effects. You get a guitar amp and a chorus. Sounds awesome. Um, so yeah, that's what's going on here. And that is automated. It's, it's set to play all the way through. Um, it's set to play the first two bars of it all the way through. Um, and if we hit sequence, ba -ba -ba -ba. yeah, it's pad five, right? Uh, but actually it doesn't matter. Um, ba -ba -ba. Yep, that's mapped to mod. And so I actually used, instead of modulating the level of the whole kick, I'm modulating the level of the volume of the MFX. And so again, this, if this is the only pad that's being sent to the MFX, so I can have this cut in and out in a modulated and automated way without cutting out the rest of the drum track. And that was all done manually. And yeah, um, I think that was really cool. It's a fun technique. It made it a lot grittier and more aggressive with the guitar and amp, and it gave me the option to modulate it independent of the rest of the drum track. So yeah, I mean, that's that's a win-win-win all around. And then I think the rest of the pads are really much. Nice. They're just, uh... Honestly, just jam out. Uh, if I, I'll mute it so you don't hear it. jam out. You can hit record, jam out, try it a few times, or play through. That's all I did to like put these like ear candy bits in there. Uh, just where I thought they sounded nice. Um, the other, uh, one other trick I have here is this sound, which I really like this sound. It's like white noise one, I think. White noise three. It's a cool sound, especially for like future based stuff. So this is just layered with every other snare. Uh, so if you just listen to this, like the the kick snare with this enabled. It just gives that little like with the snare, um, which, you know, nice variation. I think it sounds cool, keeps you interested, even if you don't like consciously pick up on it. So that's why it's there. Um, so that is everything with the drums and the sample. Sounds like this. So in the, the drop, the first four bars and the second four bars are like separate in my head. So that's the first four bars of the drop, just the percussion. And then the other three tracks we have on track two, I believe is the bass. Let's go to track two. Yeah. And that, uh, 
Yeah, honestly, uh, that's Razor Bass Lead One, and what it, I don't think I changed very much. I like I like the sound of it. Um, yeah, I did. I added some attack and decay just to make it a little bit more. So the actually, sorry, the attack is so that it doesn't interfere with the kick drum because they hit sometimes at the same time. So you can hear that um, if I mute the rest. Uh, oops, wrong button. I mute all of this. Uh, it just, that way it's not, it doesn't have like the transient at the same time as the kick and it really as a bass doesn't need a transient. Um, so that's why it has that. And I like to add some decay on sounds like that because I think without decay, they sound weird. Uh, let me see. Decay plus 16, if I don't give it decay. Uh, it doesn't sound that weird. Go with a little decay. Uh, it doesn't sound that different. I don't know, I add a little decay. Sometimes they sound weird without it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so. And that just that's just following the melody that we want. Oh, sorry, I was editing track three. Let me, let me go back. Uh, sound, setting, decay for track two. No, doesn't sound different. Maybe a little. So decay doesn't decay is does whatever decay parameter is set in the patch, so it's not always super consistent. Um, but yeah, it's set at sixteen. If it sounds good, you know, don't change what's not broken. Uh, so yeah, so that's track two with the bass. Let me go back to track one and uh, unmute our stuff, just so we have it for we want it. Um, yeah, and then uh, track three. It's on track three, Axe Classic Lead. This one I did, I made this polyphonic, which especially to make aggressive sounding chords like you want in uh, these sorts of like EDM genres, I like to take a really aggressive lead patch. It's not that aggressive, but it's a little aggressive. And, but, and then make it polyphonic. This one, since I'm using it as chords, I also added a little bit of attack. It would be more aggressive without... It's more aggressive without the attack, but I uh, I added a little of attack. And uh, so, and I made it, it intentionally, I changed it to polyphonic. And I think that that is like a useful little trick. If you take like a sound that you like, but it's mono, you can just flip the switch to polyphonic and you can get really like thick sounding chords that way. The other thing is with the portamento that's on it, um, as it hits chords, it gives it some, yeah, I turned on portamento and lowered the time uh, pretty low. So you can hear how it slides a little bit between notes. That's the, the portamento doing its thing. Um, and uh, yeah, so I think that gives it like a bit of an edge, like a bit of a like, just a little bit of a slide into it, especially with the attack. And I think that gives it some real nice character. So that's why I did that, and then... Uh, again, they're just playing... I used whatever... Uh, like... Inversion sounded good at the time. But it's the same chord progression that we've been dealing with. Uh, and then just that rhythm that I liked that I think is sort of future bassy. Um, and then, yeah, and then that's, that's sort of the, the gist for that. I did do, I did automate this levels. You hear how it goes like, it goes like, bah, bah, and then it cuts out and then it goes, ah, it almost has like that tail at the end of it. Um, I did that on purpose to give like sort of some space. So there is quite a bit of reverb on uh, the track three um, and release. Um, so that gives plenty of like stuff to work with. Um, and then you can see on the motion track, uh, I just pretty consistently, we go, the, the sound again is level. So it's, it's loud at the beginning 
then it cuts down low, and then it comes back up at the at the second half of it. I thought that was a cool thing, because uh, again, I like the sound of like, it's big in your face and then like drops back when the snare hits, like la la la, la snare. Just kills it, just gives you that like second of hang time. Um, but, and then I brought it back in. Uh, I think I'd have a similar motion set up on this track. Yeah, so it goes, the level goes down and then comes back up in the second half of that measure. Um, and uh, I didn't go all the way down to zero here to give that little bit of like, that like, uh, and then the back into the, when the, when the, the note hits. Um. You can hear even without the snare, it gives you like the, the illusion, the feeling almost of a snare, like. And that's what I was looking for. And I really like that in future bass stuff. And that's why it's there. Uh, what's on track four? I don't actually think much is on track four. Oh. So I wanted this bit at the very, very end of the drop just to tease in the next build that's coming. And I didn't have any more buttons on my sample track. So I just put the whole thing on a, the, on a tone track. Um, I don't even think I did anything really to it. Um, but, uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't do anything to it, but I had another track. I had a whole other track to use. I didn't need anything to do with the whole, with the drop. Cause I only needed the two sounds for this drop. Um, and yeah, so that's it. So then the, the second half of the drop of the first drop is very similar to the first half. It just has the lead vocal over it. I think it's the main difference. Um, just the chord. Is it, which one is it? Must be this one, yeah. Uh, yeah. And this is the, the hook of their original song and it like it, it suits the drop beautifully. And I wrote the drop with it in mind when I was like putting the chords and the rhythms down. Um, so yeah, so then the second half of the drop, uh, it's just. Yeah, uh, same deal. Um, and it, it works, I love it. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's that. So yeah, so that's the whole that's the whole drop. We are halfway through the song and we're actually much more than halfway through the song. You can probably tell from the length of the video. But uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's just listen to the drop. So I'm always focused on how do we bring in the next section. And so for that, I mean, it was pretty simple. I just, like I said, I, uh, I just, piece of cake. Uh, and then, yeah, and then into the buildup, this, I mean, they recorded this whole thing. Again, you should go listen to their song on Spotify or wherever you like to listen to music. Um, but like, they, they recorded this whole thing. They had like the cool harmonies, they had everything going up and I barely needed to, I felt like like this was free. It was already done to use this part as a build up. <laughs> uh, it's emotional, it has the context, it's perfect. Um, so it's just... Um, yeah, it's, it's just super simple. Uh, it's it's very similar. I, I copied a lot from the buildup that we did earlier, uh, but this one I made even busier, a little bit more aggressive, and I added a little bit more to really get like the the building sensation in there. Um, and then oh, okay, this is a this is another little trick that I did because I wanted to I wanted to do two different things. One is, you can hear at the beginning. Maybe you can hear at the beginning. Uh, if we go to sequence, we go here. We can see at the beginning at least. Um, 
So the sound there just uh, resets it from whatever it was in the clip before. Sometimes that's an important thing to do. Um, or maybe actually whatever it becomes at the end of this clip. No, it must've been before, that's fine. Um, but so the filter, you see as we go up, the filter itself is rising from low, what did I do? Yeah, this is just, the filters is consistently going up uh, and it goes from zero to like 64 at the end here. Uh, which again, I bring things down, like there's nothing really playing here. I just brought it back down. Uh, so it's ready for whatever's coming next. Um, that's not entirely true. Forget I said that. We'll talk about why I brought it down in a minute, hopefully. Um, but you can see the filter and the mod are both going up. And the reason for that is the, the mod is set to the multi-mode filter, which is in the MFX. So the vocal, yeah, the vocal is set to compressor six. And we can see from the compressor six that it's set to the multi effects, whereas the other compressors are set to the dry output. So this, this pad is controlled by, with the DJ style filter. So the normal filter, you can hear it goes, it, it'll cut off down, it'll bring the cutoff down, but once you go past 50, it doesn't raise the cutoff. Um, whereas the DJ style filter on the MFX channel goes all the goes down, and once you pass uh, 12 o'clock, it, it becomes a high pass filter and goes up and filters out the low stuff. So I wanted to be able to do that with just this and not mess up the stuff going on in the rest of the drum track. So the other filter, the drum filter is going up, but I can independently control the filter on the vocals, even though it's in the same drum track. Uh, and again, just like creative routing to the multi effects because you can do so much with the compressor and the filter and the EQ already on each drum pad. You don't always need a multi effect on your drum rack is my experience. So I really like to use, especially when like I'm using samples and stuff, I'm doing this sort of remix. I really like to use the multi effect as like a, a showstopper piece, if you will, like something exciting. You don't need to be, you don't need to use it as like a, like a mixing tool or whatever. You can really use it for like an effect. Um, and so that's what I did here. So like just this is routed to the multi effect so I can control them both uh, independently, even though they're all on one track. Um, again, making the most of what we got. Uh, so then, on oh what the other the only other thing is i also you can see here if this wasn't clear by the way the motion track is a little bit tricky to get to sometimes if you hit shift and a key you select the butt you select this and then if you hold shift and turn a knob you'll edit the motion track but if you just click the knob this the value knob you can pull up the the motion lanes and then you can see the different motion lanes by clicking the different buttons here uh, so that's all that we're doing. Uh, so several times it looks like uh, we're changing uh, the FSFX track. Um, and again, so we, if we hold this, we can see that that's routed to course tune. So it's the same trick as before. If I want to pitch one drum, I can pitch the whole track and only play that drum during that time. And we can use other samples uh, like the, the other samples that are playing for a long time won't be affected by it. So as long as we don't need like a kick drum or another one shot right there, we can really mess with the, with the chorus tune. Um, so that's what I did uh, through here again to generate that like that real ba -da 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 right at the end of the, of the build up. Um, I think the other two tracks are really, or the other three tracks are really the same. You have uh, track two with Track two with the pulse width basic pad, track three with the piano strings, track four with the pink alert. Uh, I really, I don't know if I said it before, I really like the piano strings patch. Like it's just, it sounds really good for so many different things. Uh, especially if you're doing like the modulation and stuff. If you're quiet on the velocity, it sounds just like a, like a decent piano, but you can really, it's like, it's a nice layer. Um, but yeah, that's the whole, Build up, and again, uh, the, the guys did a great job with uh, 
with like the harmonies and stuff through there so I didn't have to do too much about it. Um, but yeah, that's uh, ba -ba. that's the, the second build up. So yeah, I'll just play that through one more time. <laughs> So that's uh, that's the build up. Again, I did the same thing with the drums. Uh, this drum track is it's busier. So like, um, oh no, sorry. Let me let me go back to four. Like this guy has a lot going on the whole time. Um, we got our toms. We got our snare doing its thing. Uh, we have anything? We have some rolls in the hi hats. Uh, where it's exciting. Um, yeah, and uh, I really, again, like I, I just, especially as we get close to the end with the snare gets super, super busy. Um, I like to have, I like to experiment with different rhythms. Uh, you know, like I, if you think of a measure, if you think of a measure broken up into four beats, uh, it's good to like, sort of repeat yourself through the four beats um, and then maybe add like a little bit of a variation on one of them. Uh, but like, it's nice to think about as like one, two, like ba 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 like in groups and like repetition and breaking that repetition is what makes music interesting and also like the right amount of interesting and predictable. So I really like, I just mess around with different things to get that rhythm and then Especially for this sort of music, you want it to like lean into like the the pulses on the one, two, three, and the four, like right like there. So like think of those and like what you can do around those repetitively that's interesting. Um, and then you can just Google like different rhythms, like the like the, the Dembo rhythm is like a super popular one in these sorts of music, which is like. And I think that's probably like in here somewhere, but there's all there's all sorts of different rhythms you can like pull in from different percussion sounds to really like make this sort of thing like <laughs> um, Yeah, so you know, have fun. Um, layer different things, experiment, really. Uh, and if you take like a few different sounds and like compress them together uh, with the compressors, like these two go into the same compressor and that gives them some like, it holds them together nicely so they sound like they're meant to go together. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's the second build up. And uh, we're coming into the final drop, which I know there's two, there's two left, but they're really very similar. Um, so the last drop, I just gave it you know, I gave it the lyric from the beginning. The drop itself is the same, I think, uh, for the most part as the first drop, except I've added a lead sound, which is Axe Analog Brass. I love the synth brass sounds in the 101. I love synth brass sounds in general, but like, that's what they thought, that's what they, you know, that's what Yamaha thought a trumpet sounded like in like the 70s. All right, man, I know it's been a long video because my iPad ran out of storage. So I deleted some stuff, I'm back. Hopefully we can get through the end. What I was saying was this, I love synth brass sounds. I just love them. This is what Roland thought a trumpet sounded like in the 70s and it just sounds so cool. Um, so all I do here is I have a lead line that follows the melody of the lyrics. Um, and I think it sounds cool. It a little bit like wobbles in and out of phase with it, which I think sounds neat. Maybe it's not in time or whatever, but I just played it in it's like. And it's got portamento on it. Um, yeah, obviously I knew what the notes were when I played it the first time, but that's sort of the gist of it. Uh, 
I like the slidiness. I like it gives like some nice oomph to uh, to what's going on. Uh, yeah, and it just sounds really really cool. Uh, so I did I did remember while I was deleting stuff off of my iPad that I wanted to mention briefly uh, this this guy. Um, let me go back to the drop where it's more prominent, I think. Yeah. I, I, I like having this here. Um, if you just listen to the, these guys, let me actually, let me delete everything or mute everything but that. I think it adds some really nice character to the synths that are already here. So without that character adding. I think it adds I think it adds a nice little edge. Um, I remembered I wanted to just give that little side by side comparison with that guitar amped version. Uh, in the the last drop, it's not there as much because there's a little bit more going on with the lyrics and the lead line. But yeah, uh, it's just the lead line just follows the lyric. <laughs> But yeah, that's it. And then uh, these guys are pretty much the same. Uh, classic lead again with the, the made polyphonic, the razor bass lead with a little bit of attack so it doesn't get interrupted by too much. Um, um, that's the other thing. A lot of times I'm, I'm remembering more uh, with future bass chords, they do that like wobble sort of thing, like wow, 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 wow. Uh, and I elected, you can do that with like the motion, but it can be a little bit steppy on the 101, but with the amount of control you have over the attack and decay and release, you can just, you can just like play it in manually really. Like. like that's, that's all that I did. Um, that's why it's every two steps, but it gives that like wobbly effect that I'm looking for. Uh, so yeah, so that's uh, that's it. The only other, uh, the second half of this, this is a common technique uh, in EDM sorts of things is just drop everything out for a couple of beats, wind it back up and slam it down again on the beginning of the second bar. I love when songs do it. I wanted to do it here. I thought it made me feel like I was shouting it from a festival stage. So I did. Um, so you can hear that uh, at bar three of this drop. Bar five. I love that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's super simple, right? All I did was take all the drums out. Uh, you can see the measure before. There's, you know, kick and snare is doing their thing. And then on this measure, we just don't have the kick and snare playing. We, ha we play this riser instead. I showed you how to make that. I think that's from somatics probably. Uh, the gu guitar chords are still going, uh, but I'm actually probably muted them there. If I play. Yeah, they're muted there for that section. Um, so yeah. Uh, and then I think there's no bass here for that measure. Yeah, there's no bass playing. Uh, in track three, I just played the chord. This is the second chord of the progression. That's where the second chord of the progression goes. Um, and all I did was give it a bit of motion. All I did was modulate the filter. Um, you can see... I just gave it filter right up into here. And then uh, on bar seven, six, on bar six, everything goes back to normal. Um, but just letting the vocal ring out there, I think really like, like sells it. That's my favorite moment in the song, I think. Uh, that's, I try to think of like songs, especially if you're like thinking of like for a festival or that sort of thing, you want like a moment. Something a DJ can be like, this is where it's like, boom, you know what I mean? 
Uh, so yeah, that you want that in other, uh, plenty of other genres too, but I feel like especially like for a DJ that's only gonna play 45 seconds of your track at the most in like part of a bigger set, you want a moment to sell that. Uh, so yeah, that's the moment in my opinion. Maybe it's something else to other people, but to me, that was my moment. Um, after that, like, frankly, it's like a victory lap. It's like you get to like dance and bask in how fun the song has been going so far. So the that one, so that just finishes out like that. Um, the, the, that's the second half of the, the drop. Um, and then the, the second four bars of that eight bar drop. And then there's just four more bars, I think. I think it, it's just four. If I go to clip six. Oh, it's a different one. Yeah, it's just four bars. But that's it. That's uh, It's the same as the eight bars before it. It's the same as the four bars before it, or the four at the beginning. Four bars, the four bars here are the same as the first four bars of, tra of clip five. Uh, which is to say, uh, it has the drop synths, it has the sample, and it has the lead part, but it doesn't have the vocal. And that's just for dancing your way out. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's the whole song. So I did one of my favorite tricks, uh, the overall multi-effect is, uh, the enhancer. The enhancer sounds so good. I honestly, I'm not sure what it does. It's, I think that it does some saturation, some EQ and maybe some compression, but it like, it brightens it up. I'm not a mastering engineer. Like I said, this got sent to a mastering engineer. I'll link his info on the bottom. Um, he's super cool. Uh, but yeah, uh, I think like the enhancer just makes it sound so good. Like, let's let's just listen to this part, and I'm gonna turn it off. I think it just makes it sound better, um, and you can dial it in with these two knobs, uh, mix and sensitivity. Uh, yeah, I usually leave them around 50%, but the way that I set it up is I'll turn the mix all the way up and the sensitivity all the way down, and then you won't hear a difference between on and off here. Let's see. Right, and then I'll turn the sensitivity up until it sounds like good, but like too much, and then I'll dial the mix back. So it'll be like... See how it starts to like almost hurt there? Like you don't really want that, so. Just before there, and then. Easy peasy. Um, so yeah, and then uh, what else we got? Uh, we have um, compression and EQ. <sighs> Guys, I'm not a master engineer. Uh, I wish I could tell you more about this. I, I fumble around a little bit. I've talked about compression, like what it is before in a general sense. There's a lot of videos out there that can explain it better than I can. The only thing I'm gonna tell you uh, is make sure, make sure, did I, I didn't even use the EQ. So scratch that. Uh, the compression, I do have it on. But make sure that you're not just making it louder. Like set, the, set your makeup gain, uh, and again, like you can go look up how compression works. Um, but like, I promise, like if you wanna be good at compression, set your makeup gain so that it's the same level as, so that when the compressor's on and the compressor's off, it's the same volume. Don't use the compressor to make stuff like a lot louder cause it'll sound better, but it's just lying to you. Um, and then just turn it off and on. And if it sounds better on, then you did good. If it sounds worse on, delete everything and start over. That's, that's what I do for compression, honestly. That's, that's my tip. Um, but yeah, that's the song. I hope you like it. Please check out my brother's version. It's an R&B pop style track. It's really good. It's really crisp. Like I said, I made this remix because I wanted to be part of it because I like the song so much. Uh, it's Mad Happy. I'll list link them other places. Uh, losing my head. Uh, and then my version went to their mastering engineer uh, so it'll sound even better than it does now. 
hope I, I expect. Um, and that will be released officially on Mad Happy's page in like a month or two. Um, right now, if you're like, man, that song was so good. I have to listen to it now. Thank you. That's so sweet. Thank you. Um, you can go over to my Patreon, which I'll link below. You don't have to pay anything. I hope I can make it set it up that way. I'll do my best to set it up so you don't have to pay anything. You can just download the song because I'm just super thankful that you would want to listen to my music. That's, that's the whole goal, right? Um, so you can check that out there. And uh, yeah, I hope you had got something useful from it. Thank you so much for sticking around this long. I know it's been a while. Um, yeah, I really hope that I'll have more, more videos coming out. I have like new lots of tricks and stuff that I want to talk about. I'm working on this big project that I'm super excited about. Um, yeah, that's, that's it, I guess. Uh, thank you. Uh, if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, you'll find out when this song comes out for realsies. And uh, yeah, yeah, just thanks. Thank you all so much. I'm so happy that I get to do this and like people care and people want to listen. And I really hope you learned something. Leave a comment. I do do my best to read and respond to all the comments. I read all the comments. I do my best to respond to all of them. Sometimes I forget, sorry. I do my best. I still go back and go to respond to old comments sometimes when I have time. Uh, but yeah, thank you all so much. I will, I'll stop now. And uh, yeah, thanks. Thank you for, uh, for listening and have a, have a great day and I'll see you soon.